Hey, what is up everybody? It's Animac here for Anime Uproar and the final new Admiral, Ryogyukyu or Green Bull has finally been revealed. We all knew that this guy would be powerful and there were many theories out there about his devil fruit and other abilities. But I don't think that all of us realized just how dangerous this man would be. His plant-based devil fruit was able to instantly incapacitate dozens of Kaido's subordinates, including the likes of King and Queen, which is absolutely insane. And his devil fruit is actually far more dangerous than you even realize, so let me explain. You guys know how this works, if you enjoy our One Piece videos and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment, it only takes a second, but it helps with that YouTube algorithm. Oh, and subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell is a completely free way of directly supporting the channel. Finally, this video will of course contain One Piece manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution, you have been warned. Green Bull, aka Ryogyukyu, aka Aramaki, attained the rank of Admiral during the two-year time skip, along with Admiral Fujitora. The two of them replaced Aokiji and Akainu after Aokiji resigned from the Marines and Akainu was promoted to Fleet Admiral. According to Doflamingo, both Green Bull and Fujitora are overpowered monsters. And this was certainly proven to be true once we finally saw Green Bull in action against the Beast Pirates. What's more, we know that Green Bull and Fujitora fought Sabo and several other revolutionary commanders during the Reverie. And Green Bull seems to have emerged from that battle unscathed, which is in itself a testament to his incredible power. We know that Green Bull has apparently been fasting for over three years, which implies that he is able to survive without food. This was a huge mystery in the One Piece community until very recently when the true nature of his devil fruit was finally revealed. Now that we know his true power, we can assume that he doesn't need to eat because he can absorb nutrients from other people by literally draining them. That is exactly what he did to dozens of beast pirates, including king and queen. Green Bull can also create different types of plants from his body and he can then control and manipulate those plants. For instance, he can grow a huge flower from his back and make that flower rotate like a helicopter which allows him to fly. He can also transform his fingers into tree branches that extend far from his body and he can then use those branches to impale multiple enemies and drain their nutrients leaving the enemies shriveled and incapacitated. On the surface, Green Bull appears to admire Akainu, aka Fleet Admiral Sakazuki, and he even vows to kill Luffy in order to impress the Fleet Admiral. But Green Bull also seems to regularly defy Sakazuki's orders. He refused the order to kick Fujitora out of Marijua during the reverie, and he then decided to go into Wano on his own initiative despite being told not to by the Fleet Admiral. He even actively tried to conceal his location and actions from Sakazuki. This tells me that there may be more to Green Bull than meets the eye, and that goes for both his personality and his devil fruit. At first glance, Green Bull's devil fruit seems to be extremely powerful and versatile, and it appears to have the properties of a paramecia. On top of that, this devil fruit is somewhat similar to the Mosa Mosa no Mi, a plant-based devil fruit from film Z. Even though appearing in the movie means that it is a non-canonical devil fruit, the fact that it is similar to Green Bull's fruit and that it was also classified as a paramecia suggests that Green Bull's devil fruit is a paramecia as well. But not so fast. Wano has placed a huge emphasis on mythical zone type devil fruits, with Kaido, Orochi, Yamato and Onimaru all having mythical zones, and with the Wano arc also revealing that Luffy's devil fruit is actually a mythical zone. I know that some people are kind of getting tired of all these mythical zone reveals in Wano, but we still have to consider the possibility that Green Bull has a mythical zone. After all, no real plant can just impale entire human beings and drain them of their nutrients and fluids in seconds. But certain mythical plants, such as the tree yokai named Juboko, do have such abilities. In Japanese mythology, Juboko is a supernatural tree that attacks humans by changing its branches into sharp tubes, driving those tubes into its victims, and then draining the humans of their blood. You have to admit that this sounds a lot like Green Bull's power. 
And if it is true that he actually has a mythical yokai zone, this would mean that all three current admirals have a different type of devil fruit. With Kizaru having a Logia, Fujitora having a Paramecia, and Green Bull having a mythical zone. Honestly, even if you are a bit burned out on mythical zones, you have to admit that this would be pretty cool. For more on the Juboko and other yokai that Green Bull's Devil Fruit may be based on, I'm bringing in another member of our Anime Uproar team, Axel Beats. Hey everyone, you've probably seen a few of my videos here on Anime Uproar, but Animax specifically wanted me to jump in on this one because I got a degree in history from university, I lived in Japan for a while, and just generally love learning about Japanese history, mythology, and folktales. Oda has continuously brought in this idea of world myths throughout the series. For example, Marco's Phoenix Fruit, Magellan creating poisonous hydras, the Boa sisters mirroring the Gorgons, Chaka and Pell being based on Egyptian deities, and so on and so on, but especially recently with this huge emphasis on zone fruit since we started Wano, we have seen a huge influx of mythological inspiration. In the past few years alone, we've seen the Siryu, Kitsune, Yamato no Orochi, Onyudo, and the Okuchi no Magami. Which is probably why, despite having two vacant Admiral seats post time skip, which needed to be filled, we didn't get introduced to Green Bull really until just now. If we look at the other new Admiral, Fujitora, his role is supposed to be one which mirrors Smoker. And as such, he was introduced to us in Dressrosa, where his role juxtaposes Smoker's role in Alabasta. In the same way, I'm sure as we learn more about Green Bull, we will see more direct parallels between him and Wano's themes. However, almost immediately, we're seeing his abilities be in line with Japanese mythology, which is pretty cool because typically they show that kind of thing through zone devil fruits, but like Magellan, it seems like Green Bull has a Paramecia. Although, like Animac mentioned earlier, how cool would it be to have a mythical zone plant-based devil fruit? All we actually know about the specifics of Green Bull's fruit so far though is that it seems to be able to produce, manipulate, and control flowers and plants. We don't know the extent of these powers yet, but if we look to the other admirals, it's likely pretty insane. I think the best place to begin looking at possible abilities for Green Bull though is likely looking at plant-based yokai and myths, which might be incorporated. Originally, I was a bit hesitant, but after seeing chapter 1050, I'm more than certain this will be worked into his fruit in some way or another. Towards the end of chapter 1050, we see him piercing through some of Kaido's crew, including King and Queen, and seemingly sucking the life out of them. Even Queen just seems to be skin and bones, and that's a pretty big change for them. Which leads us to the first and most direct yokai inspiration, as Animac mentioned, the Juboko. This is more or less a vampire tree. It's a yokai that appears on places that used to be battlefields. The plant grows soaked in the blood from the battle and all the dead people who were laid to rest around them. Once the Juboko grows, it begins targeting humans that pass by it, turning its branches into piercing straws and using them to suck the blood out of its victims something which has the added benefit of keeping the Juboko looking pristine. And when you look at what he's doing in 1053, it looks exactly like he's draining king and queen in the same way. And god does this man look pristine. The Juboko also offers defensive options though. The Yokai can actually heal itself, so while he might not have a Logia, he might at least be able to regenerate like one, similar to how Marco does. This siphoning ability might also be related to the Manindake, a bamboo yokai that feeds on souls. But there doesn't seem to be any mention of souls here, so I doubt he's actually referring to that, but it's still worth mentioning just based on the siphoning action. We might also be able to look at the Ninmenju, another famous Japanese tree folk legend, and this one being a much more simple thing. The Ninmenju is just a tree which blooms flowers that look like human heads, and in some of the more scary variants of the stories, these heads are able to laugh, or they would even become real heads. Something which might be a cool mix of these myths would be if Green Bull was able to absorb enough energy from other people, and rather than just sprouting heads, he could sprout entire bodies, making him a literal one-man army once he has time to set up. In terms of more modern stories like anime, manga, comics, or cartoons, these are filled with characters like Green Bull who use plants as the core of their abilities, so looking at those might also give us some ideas of what he might be able to do. From the West, we have characters like Groot, Swamp Thing, and Poison Ivy, while anime and manga offer characters like Mimosa or Charlotte from Black Clover, Kurama from Yu Yu Hakusho, or Kamui Woods and Ibarra from My Hero Academia. 
There are definitely a ton of characters who have similar power basis, but between them it's pretty common to control vines, use pheromones or aroma to manipulate people, heal themselves or others, have some select poison abilities, be pretty great for capturing or holding people prisoner, having thorn-based attacks, or growing specific plants. And while many of the earlier abilities are pretty straightforward, the idea of growing plants is the one that is least often explored but the most deadly. We could almost look at this as a very upgraded version of Usopp's pop greens. Like Usopp, usually in these stories we see things like Venus flytraps, cacti, mushrooms, and pitcher plants being created. But there's a few very deadly plants which could be used in interesting ways and never get mentioned. For example, the angel trumpet plant, if consumed, can cause hallucinations so intense that people have been recorded cutting off their own tongue and downstairs bits because they lost their grounding in reality. And there are plenty of psychoactive plants like this which could fall into this category as well. But scarier than the plants that you would consume are those you can't even touch. Giant hogweed sap makes you allergic to the sun for days at a time. Bloodroot sap can necrotize skin tissue. The manchineel tree is so toxic that just touching it can make your skin blister. Small amounts of it can poison entire water supplies, and it was even used as a torture device simply by tying people to it. And even smoke created from burning this plant would immediately blind you. And finally, the deadliest of all and the most fitting for a One Piece name, the Gimpy Gimpy Bush. It's covered in poison needle-like hairs that just on contact has been quoted feeling like hot acid and electricity being put on you at the same time. But the worst part of this plant though is how long the effects last. It can go from days to weeks to months or even years of consistent pain. All that to say, Oda seems to definitely be taking an interest in mythology when it comes to Green Bull's powers, but if he fully dove into what real world nature has to offer, Green Bull could be one of the most terrifying characters in all of One Piece. And while you might be saying that there's no way Oda would use any of these terribly toxic plants in the series, can I please redirect your attention to Don Krieg's poison gas, the Amudake mushroom, Crocodile's hook, Magellan's toxins, Marigold's poisons, Caesar Clown's fumes, Smiley, the armored stonefish's skin? The series is full of increasingly deadly poisons and toxins, and this would likely be no different. Thank you so much, Axel, for that excellent rundown of the possible mythical inspirations for Green Bull's Devil Fruit. And also thank you for going full botanist on us in order to give us an idea of what other crazy powers Green Bull might possess. I think that Oda has kept Green Bull on the sidelines until now for a good reason. And I believe that he will turn out to be an extremely important and insanely dangerous character. Especially since his current mission appears to be killing Luffy and taking his head to Akainu. No wonder that so many people are afraid of this guy, to the point that the fleet admiral didn't even want him on Wano because of all the potential carnage that Green Bull might unleash on that country. So what do you guys think? Does Green Bull have a standard Paramecia Devil Fruit? Or does he have a mythical zone model Juboko or something along those lines? Also, what is Green Bull really planning? Is he loyal to Fleet Admiral Sakazuki or does he have an agenda of his own? Finally, do you think that Green Bull or Ryokyugyu aka Aramaki might actually be from Wano? Do you buy the theory that he may be a blood relative of Zoro? Definitely leave your thoughts down in the comments below, I always love hearing from you. If you're looking for a video to watch next, check out my recent video on Rox D. Zebek and the theory that he could be Luffy's other grandpa, link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more One Piece content in the future, leave a quick like, it helps me out a lot. And of course, if you're new here or maybe you watch our videos but you just haven't taken the time to subscribe yet, remember that subscribing and hitting that bell is a completely free way of directly supporting the channel and it means a lot. You can also hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at AnimeUproar. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!